Hi, welcome to another edition of Queen Bee Quilting. So a lot of folks um, are doing their own binding at home, and that's wonderful, and I encourage you to do your own bindings. Um, there are many ways to, to make and um, finish off your bindings. Um, I can tell you that I, as every quilter does, I have my own preferences on how I like to do things, but um, when you're cutting bindings, um, you're, you may have a, um, an application that you use on your cell phone, you may have, um, um, speaking of which, let me turn mine off. turn my volume down. How about that? Um, so we each have their, our own preferences and reasons for doing binding the way we do and I just thought I'd show you some of mine. Um, I, I thought about it after I already started cutting but I'm not finished cutting so um, let me show you. I have, cr I have made a small wall hanging for a class that I'm getting ready to do for this Highland Cow. Um, through Queen Bee Quilting, so if you're interested at all in this little wall hanging, it's a good size wall hanging. Um, I don't know the exact measurements right off the top of my head, but it makes a cute little cow. So if you've got somebody that loves Highland cows, this, this is the class for you. Um, I even, because I'm a frugal and I save every scrap, I had enough cutoffs of my, my, um, my star points and my flying geese on the front that I had enough to make little wind pinwheel blocks to put on the back. So this is just an idea of something that you could do by saving your scraps. Um, you know, we all, that's how we do, that's how we make things. We cut big pieces of fabric into little pieces of fabric and then we sew them all back together and make another big piece of fabric. <laughs> but anyway, I'm making binding for this quilt today. So I'm going to put this in the background so you can continue to look at that. So you need to know the measurements of your of your piece so you know what to how much fabric you're going to need for your um, for your for your border or for your binding on your quilt. And so you should measure your quilt, measure your piece, your finished piece. And so right now mine's 40 by 43. So 40 by 43, you can put that in your app, um, or you can just eyeball it like I'm doing, um, because none of mine is wider than a width of fabric of, of standard 44 inch fabric, 43, 44 inch fabric. So I'm just going to cut four strips. I've already cut three off camera, and um, so I need one more, and then I'll show Actually, I need two more, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, I'll tell you why in just a little bit. So when you're cutting fabric, there's different um, there's different widths that you need to cut your strips, or you can cut your strips. You can cut a two-inch strip of fabric. Um, you can cut, um, if you're going to do what's called the French fold method, I think, which is where... Um, you take a piece of fabric, and this is an over-exaggeration, but I'm gonna sh I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about. So you'll sew a piece of fabric, or take a strip, it gets folded in half. Let me get a scrap piece. It so happens that I have some right here. This is good. Good piece to demonstrate. So you take your strip, you iron it, fold it in half, and iron it. Okay? You fold it in half one time. And what you do normally is you take your piece. Mm, what am I going to show you? I'll show you. I have lots of scraps of fabric laying around. But what you would do is you would take the raw edges not the fold, and you line it up with the raw edge of your finished piece. Okay? Just like this. And I'm going to use some pins. I know, I'm a pinaholic. But we'll, we'll put some pins in here, and you're going to sew that 
Maybe I'll put a ten in here. At a quarter inch, just like we do for everything else when we quilt, ten, you're going to sew it at a quarter of an inch. Okay. You're going to leave a tail about ten inches long, and you're going to you're going to sew this seam right to the top. Let me use another pin so I have enough pin pieces to show you what I'm talking about. Don't want to see that. Come on. Come on, come on. Close enough. Okay, so then you've got it stitched on. What you'll do is you'll take that and fold it up. And I will tell you, a lot of people sew this, they attach it the first time to the back of the quilt, and then they fold it over. Like I'm getting ready to show you, you fold it over one time, and that catches the, the raw edge of your quilt. Now, if you use a two and a half inch strip, you may have some space left in here between the edge here and the fold of your new binding. And what that does is it encourages, if you use this quilt a lot, or this wall hanging like a blanket, and you use it a lot, um, where it's going to start to fray and to thin will be on this finished edge. So I like to have two layers of fabric there to make it a little more durable, which is why I prefer this method. Because I end up giving a lot of my quilts away. I make them as gifts. And I do make a lot of bed quilts. I don't make as many wall hangings. Because I like stuff on my walls, as you probably can see behind me. And most of my walls are already covered. Although, you know, you do have to redecorate from time to time. So anyway, I might be making a few more wall hangings in the future. Um, but there is another method that you can buy pre-manufactured um, binding. Let me find another piece of binding. And you can take and cut that piece of binding, fold it up just like we did this first one, okay? Fold it and iron it in half, which is what I have done with this piece. I just press a fold, iron it in half. But store-bought binding comes in what they call a double fold. You fold, it, you fold it in half, and then you fold it in half again with the raw edges in the middle, and then you create another little fold. If I were to press that, press it nice and neat so that it stays, hit it with a little um, spray starch or fabric sizing starch combo, whatever your brand of choice is, um, that creates a double, what they call a double fold binding. I think it's called a double fold binding. I have to verify that for you. Um, but you end up with, and it gives you a little pocket to put in. Like I said, my, my preference is to do the French fold binding because it gives you a double layer here. This method, you only have a single layer. So this one, this method might be better for wall hangings and that sort of thing. And that, that way you can be sure that you have a, exactly a quarter of an inch on either side. Um, and you can sew with your quarter, you can sew your edge with the quarter edge foot on your sewing machine and um, you'd have exactly a quarter inch. I quit using my quarter inch on, on the side because I find that I just don't sew, I don't sew nice straight seams that way. I, I end up with wow, wow, wow. So I, I, you know, I have to do what works for me, right? So that's another method that you can use for folding your binding. Um, so what we're going to do is when you cut these strips, Okay, sometimes you need it to be longer. So when I'm making binding, I cut all my strips. And then I sit down at the sewing machine and I, and I sew my binding strips together. So when you're sewing binding strips together for the edge of your finished piece, your quilted project, um, you are, can do it one of two ways. Um, if you don't mind having a big bump, um, if your fabric is fairly thin, um, you can sew it with a straight seam. Now, I, again, the only reason I did this one this way is because it was a fairly thin fabric, and I know that 
when I get ready to sew this, if I do the, the French fold method, so now right here at that little section, I have one, two, three, four layers of fabric for that little half an inch on either side of the quilt. But now when I get ready to fold this up and over my quilt, and I'm going to sew it again, I end up quadrupling or tripling the number of layers that my domestic sewing machine has to sew through, which is why when you're sewing binding on, you want a heavy duty needle in your machine. So you need to be sewing with a denim needle or um, I think that's what it's called is a denim needle. So it's a heavy duty denim needle, like a 9014 um, in your domestic machine. Uh, so the other method for joining your, your binding strips together, obviously, now I haven't done that yet, but to join your pieces together, you're going to take right sides together, and you know you're the right sides because your fold is on the same side facing each other, and you're going to take one piece in one hand, one piece in the other hand, you're going to line your edges up. And now I'm not doing, I'm not, they're not exactly lined because I've got the selvages on here, but we'll pretend like this is cut. And what you're going to do is you're going to, to, to line them up so that they crisscross and your edges are, the, are perfectly lined up on these two sides. And then you can pin that. And you you can take a pencil once you get it lined up good. Oop, let me do that. Line it up good. You can lay it down and you can take, and I'm going I'm, I'm to angle my camera down just a little bit here. Just a second. I mess up in here, don't I? Okay. You know, I should call me, the, I should call myself the messy quilter or the chaotic quilter. That would be a good name. Okay, so anyway, instead of Queen Bee Quilter. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to draw a line. And let me get my mar my marking pencil and a smaller ruler. And you're going to go from corner to corner. You're going to draw a line. Now, this is your sewing line. If you if you're not familiar with doing bindings, this is your sewing line, your stitch line, here we go, i got a blue pencil so you can see, and you're going to make a line from corner to corner, okay, and then you pin it in place, and line your edges up, so um, this fabric is a little thin, it's white fabric so it's easily easy to see all the way through it, but then, um, but you can use the line, um, the, the center line, the red line on your domestic sewing machine on your um, your quarter inch washi tape that you have lined up. If you use that method for um, the guide strips um, for your sewing machine, especially if you're a beginner, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, there's many other um, aids on the market out there but now what you're going to do is you're going to sew this from corner to corner and we'll pretend that I've sewn that from corner to corner along that line and then you'll flip it open and when you do you're going to end up with a with a diagonal seam now I only do this in my binding material, um, I don't do this method of joining strips on a border because I don't want to. I don't want to end up with an area of bias six inches long in a six-inch border. Okay, what that does is it causes flagging in your borders, and then your borders don't look like they were designed to fit your quilt or your project. So I don't use that method. I do a straight end-to-end -end like I did in here. I do an end-to-end -end seam when I'm um, where'd that seam go? There it is. I do an end-to-end -end seam 
in my border. Okay, and this may have been designed for a border fabric, and that's why it's end to end, because most of the time I do this to join my binding. Okay, um, but we are talking about binding, so let me get back to binding and not borders. So, um, you will trim, you will trim the excess away at a quarter of an inch on the back and, and press it nice and flat. Press your seam open, okay, and I, I so you want, again, anytime you're pressing a seam open or you know you're going to press your seams open, you want to reduce your stitch length um, to a smaller stitch length. That way when you iron them and press them open and you put that seam under pressure by um, pressing it open, um, your thread won't show. Your individual thread will not show as a stitch in between your layers. Um, it also gives a little strength to that seam. Um, so now what you would do is you're going to sew it wrong side, you know, you're going to put it together wrong sides together, but I, what I want you to see is that by doing it this way, you end up with fabric over here and then fabric over here. And the only place that it really is a lot of layers of fabric is on this part right here, this part of the, of the, of the, of the, of the binding material. Your your layers are spread out over a larger distance. So that way your 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 um, domestic machine won't struggle so bad to go through these. Now you still need to use a heavy weight needle. Okay. Um, it's just best for your machine because you don't want you don't want to tear your machine up just because you or or bust a needle because you didn't use the appropriate size needle. Okay, so that's why we do that is, is when we, we're going to sew over top of this and then we may sew over top of it again. And if you've got a large project, you're going to be, you're going to have multiple seams. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's how I connect my binding and how I make my binding. Um, and I can show you a trick um, here in a little bit um, to... Um, once I get my binding all the way around my project and I've gotten it attached, I can show you how to do the corners. I'll show you how to do the corners to have a nice mitered look on your corners and, um, to, um, sorry, trying to clean up my mess. Um, I, so that I'll have a nice mitered look to my corners, nice square look to each corner if I want, if, if that's the effect that I'm going for. And um, I will show you how to join the two pieces in a, in that, in that angled method. Um, and it not look, it just looks like another seam on your quilt and it's less visible to the eye. And, and it'll make it match and be the perfect length every time. So um, let me, Cut to that right quick. Hang on just a second and I'll be right back. 